I, I recall this was about in year 2002 when ICGB received a letter from Honorable uh, President Abdul Kalam saying that the Indian Army on both fronts, the Eastern Front and the Western Front, suffer from dengue and there is no good diagnostics. At that time, we responded back by saying that, sorry, sir, we, we don't work on, on dengue. And we later realized that we got a phone call from the president's office saying that if the president of the country wants to work on dengue, you have to work on dengue. There is no option. So this is how the work started. And um, I, I'm in next 20 minutes or so, I will, I'm going to share highlights of my work on dengue. For, uh, uh, this will mostly involve the dengue diagnostics, but I have taken the liberty to add one or two slides uh, on the dengue drug as well as uh, one or two slides on the on the dengue vaccine. A lot of this work got uh, supported by uh, DRDO, DBT, Wellcome Trust, Indo-US WAP, NIH, and now with Sun, uh, Sun Pharma. So dengue is a serious public health threat. And you know it, it comes as uh, three kinds. One is dengue fever, where most you know, would have experienced just a fever and just headache, many of them. And this remains silent. Sometimes you have retroorbital pain, you could have muscle and joint pain, you could end up into vomiting, diarrhea, but you know, you recover. So this is dengue fever. This is spread by uh, mosquitoes, which carry four different kinds of dengue viruses. But what the problem with dengue is that we don't know for some reason it can turn into dengue hemorrhagic fever, where your capillary starts to leak. And here you can see the, you know, the hematoma, which is outside on the arm. But suddenly, for some reason, this dengue hemorrhagic fever can take a very lethal form called dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome, wherein you start to bleed internally and you have multiple organ failure and one can lose a, a patient in, in just a few hours. So early diagnosis is the only key. I, I just have one small video of about a minute and a half to talk about dengue biology. Transmitted by mosquitoes, dengue fever is a threat to almost half of the world's population. Dengue is a major public health problem, particularly in Latin America and Asia, where outbreaks occur regularly. When biting a person for its blood meal, an infected mosquito releases saliva containing the dengue virus. Once in the body, the virus infects the immune cells in the skin tissue. And enters the lymphatic system. The viral infection can then trigger a strong inflammatory reaction. During the incubation period, the virus first replicates locally. and then spreads into the bloodstream of the infected person. This is called viremia. For some patients, especially children, the infection may cause severe forms of the disease, including dengue hemorrhagic fever. The blood vessels become permeable, resulting in plasma leakage. Ultimately, dengue hemorrhagic fever requires intensive hospital care. When a mosquito bites a person who's already infected, it draws in the dengue virus contained in the blood. By biting another person, it can transmit the virus and spread the disease. So, detection of dengue infection, you know, we can do by looking at the virus itself, the viral component, which is the nucleic acid of the virus, or the virus by doing a culture, or looking at the viral proteins which are secreted into the infected individuals. So these are very specific tests which, which looks for the virus. But then after viral infection, body makes antibodies. So one could also look for IgM and IgG antibodies. The IgM comes first and IgG comes later. The trouble here is that we don't know when the patient comes to the doctor. You know? So won't it be nice to have 
both the viral components as well as the body responses to infection that is to the viral antigen as well as the human antibodies and this would be an ideal dengue test which would look at not only the virus uh, because virus for some reason when you when you enter into a critical phase virus disappears from the circulation it gets inside your tissue so if you took a blood sample you will not see the virus so you you could miss a dengue but if you look at the viral protein the non-structural protein ns1 it it covers you that window the critical phase the early phase the late phase and of course, you could have an IG. So this is a combined three in one test. This is a point of care test. And there is a story, why is it called Dengue Day One? When we had developed this technology and had worked with the company, uh, this was a rainy season and the CEO of the company had some feverish feeling. So they took his sample and, uh, and they did with this unvalidated lab test and they said in 15 minutes, sir, you have a Dengue. But since he's the owner of the company, you know, and it's an unvalidated test, you, you want to be extra sure. So it was done with, with all the other available tests from which were commercially available from BioRed, from PanBio, from Standard Diagnostics, and it was negative by all of them. Most people would think that this is false positive, but this person had worked with ICGB for several years and has, has, has seen our strength. So he kind of took himself as a dinghy positive, went home and then called a technician to his home every day to collect his 30 ml sample every day. And after about a month, he had 30 samples. He asked his team to do the testing with all the four tests, the unvalidated lab test and the three available tests. Of course, this picked up dinghy from day one of fever. Uh, the other one picked up on, dengue th on day three or day four, IgM came, IgG came. So this was a true dengue. So that's what he called it as a dengue uh, day one test. If it was not for him, this test would not have been in the market. So this is how the test look. It's a, it's a lateral flow and looking at on one side, the blue side is the antigen, the white side is the antibody and the sensitivity and specificity is very good. It also tells the doctor that is it a primary dinghy or is it a secondary dinghy? You know, are you getting it second time? And that's clinically relevant because if it is second time, you probably could have a dinghy hemorrhagic fever. And the test is so good that if I take a blood sample from any one of you, you never had dinghy, but even if you had dinghy in, in your life, it ever, it, it, you don't have a fever now, it will tell you that you, you were exposed to dinghy because of IgG. But even after having such a wonderful test, it's very difficult to get into the market. This was the scenario at that time. The, the colored uh, areas are where the dinghy is, is, um, uh, is a major burden. But the kits come from countries where dinghy is not a burden. And in 2011, you know, when these uh, kits had come to India, you know, this whole yearly stock disappeared in just a few weeks. And that was the time when was available to launch this test and this test became a market leader um, now instead of importing now uh, we are exporting these tests uh, to to various countries and I, I recall that i had worked as a postdoc in canada and one of the canadian professor uh, called me and he said you know could he get some of these tests and i asked him that canada is such a cold country do you have dinghy he said, no, we have mosquitoes, dinghy, we have this tiger mosquitoes, and we believe that your test, you know, even if you make it homogenate, crush the mosquito with a drop of water, your NS1 could pick it up. And of course, it does. Yeah. So it's not only for human, but also for the mosquito, one can look at it. And of course, this, 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 uh, this thing was recognized. Uh, um, and... <clears throat> And now this captures about 85% of the Indian market. The Southern India buys this as a, as a rate contract uh, as a, for, for all the hospitals together. And the test kit for antigen is 70 rupees. The test kit for antibodies is 70 rupees. The combined test is 140 rupees. So it's a highly affordable test, which is a great success. Now I thought in, in next uh, few minutes, I will share what happens if you have a dinghy? But you know, is there a treatment for dinghy? Of course, there was no treatment for dinghy. Uh, this was the time when Dr. Pan has put me in touch with the Vaxi, and we started to work, look at the uh, a, a bioassay guided approach, and we found a, a phytopharmaceutical drug for which we know the exact chemical, what it is, the mechanism of action, 
And, you know, we work with Sun Pharma later on, and four lakhs of these tablets are ready. Uh, phase one trials are over. The safety has been established. But that's the time in, in, in February when we, we got engaged into COVID. And we checked, would this drug also inhibit the replication of COVID, uh, sars cov 2 virus? And of course, it did in the lab. So uh, why does this inhibit both dengue as well as the sars cov virus? And, and, and this is very important point because now you see countries like Thailand, from Singapore, uh, from other, other places, you have dengue. Uh, uh, SARS coronavirus to co-infections are happening, and I'm sure this would happen even in India. So, dengue virus and SARS coronavirus, although they use different receptors to enter into the cells, but once they enter into the cells, they are both positive standard RNA viruses. They get into the endosome. The trafficking happens, and we have a, a, a data to show that it kind of locks the virus inside the endosome, so the virus replication is stopped both in case of dengue 1, 2, 3, 4, as, as well as SARS coronavirus 2. So this drug is under clinical trial right now uh, by Sun Pharma for COVID patients. Uh, there is a cohort of about 280 patients which are being in, included in this study. I shift maybe to a last uh, part of my uh, talk is the dengue vaccine. We know the dengue vaccine has been very elusive for 50 years, we, you know, there have been a lot of work on dengue vaccines, and last 20, 25 years has seen intensive work on dengue vaccine. So conventional strategies for viral vaccine is that you take viruses, weaken them, and you mix them, and you inject, and you have a vaccine. But this strategy has kind of not worked very well for, for dengue. The reason being the virus is very, very clever. It, it kind of hijacks your immune system. It lets you make very little amount of protective antibodies, which are good for the host, but it hijacks the immune system to make a lot of pathogenic antibodies, which are good for the virus. What we have done at ICGB on a knowledge-based way that we have, instead of using the whole virus, we have taken the business end of the virus and made a virus-like particle. And this vaccine, when it's produced in yeast, and it's when it is injected into into mice, rats, rabbits, goats, it produces protective antibodies in absence of the pathogenic antibodies. This work was started once again through Indo-US WAP, and Dr. Bhan, uh, my hero, uh, he was uh, responsible for bringing this good team to ICGB, and we had a lot of input from them for taking this forward. Their collaboration we were able to establish a lot of international uh, collaborations because some of the work could be done in, in those countries. Later on, ICGB and Sun Pharma have signed. We have an international patent on this design. ICGB and Sun Pharma have, have signed an agreement, and this vaccine should not, uh, enter into the phase one trials uh, pretty soon. To guide this vaccine, we have a dengue vaccine advisory group where um, uh, you, 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 you probably know uh, most of the people who are dengue experts, and their inputs are, are extremely uh, valuable to us. And nothing was possible without these wonderful students uh, and postdocs uh, from my lab. They have been uh, very instrumental, and, and I, I, you know, initially we used to lose all our PhD students when they go for postdoc, they go to other countries, but thanks to thanks to a lot of other funding abilities, a lot of these PhD students. Since last nine years, none of my PhD student has gone outside as a postdoc. They all remained here with ICGB and Sun Pharma. So thank you very much for, for this, uh, uh, giving me this opportunity. I, I just kind of summarized my 20 years of work. I know this was not in-depth science, but I just wanted to keep it very simple. So thank you very much.